With the election over, it seems like a majority of people have played their part in the democratic process. Their votes have been cast, so they should put their voice away. But if democracy is something you pull out once and then put away for four years, what's the point? Voting is not the only way to play a part in democracy. Here at Hotchkiss, most students don't have the legal right to vote. Before exploring the ongoing process of democracy at work on a local level, we asked Hotchkiss students, what is democracy to them? You may not be able to walk into a voting booth and cast your ballot, but you can be a voice that organizes and signs that position and writes a stern letter to the king. You can do that. The democracy comes from a Greek word, dem the Greek word for people, demos, and uh, the Greek word for um, power, kresi, and so the, literally the power of the people. I think democracy means that you have a responsibility to inform yourself. That's the biggest part of it, to know what choices you're making and then to make those. I personally think that in the United States, people should be required to vote or at least go to the voting station and abstain. In Australia, it's that way. There had been an election in Germany, where I live, and the, I remember on the news them saying that something like 55 or 60 percent of Germans had voted. And I remember asking my father, well, why, why did only 60 percent of people vote? That's ridiculous. And he was like, oh, well, you know, some people just don't care to take part in the democratic process. Some people just don't want to make the effort. I remember in middle school, on election day, one of the teachers yelled during lunch, no one, uh, I don't want, like, no more politics. Excuse me? It's election day. This is our, our right, our privilege. It, it is the day that we get to choose who runs our country. The billions of people don't have this right and we're going to ignore it. It was absurd to me that, like, if you had the ability to make that X on a ballot and you had that ability, why would you not? Because even though I was so young, I also knew that there are places where people do not have that ability. There are places where you cannot vote. Try to attend town hall meetings if you can, or find uh, someone who can represent you at a town hall meeting. Politics hasn't really been a part of my life very much. You know, I watch the election, and um, I'm like, a, you could call me a common American, but I think it has to do more with um, today's society and where the younger kids are a little more detached from politics as it is today. Very often people get tied up and caught up in just like, you know, the will of the masses and sort of forget about their own individual preferences, prerogatives. The environment is one of the most touchy issues right now of the um, 21st century. We only have one earth and not to use more than you really can, not to use more than you need. Individuals can't on a really broad scale save the environment. Uh, individuals can't by themselves invest in new technology. If an issue were to arise, it would have to be something extremely personal for me to, I don't know, step out of my comfort zone per se and do something about it readily. Um, I, feel that's, I feel that's what happens with most Americans. Until, it fa until the issue is on your front door, um, most people really don't feel anything about it. We searched for a local issue near the Hotchkiss School to see democracy in action. We found one, located in an unexpected place only a few miles away from campus, the Housatonic River. The reason I love it is because you can, you can kind of stand along the edge of the river there, and the river takes a wide sweeping bend downstream to the right, and you can't see what's around the corner. The Housatonic really is uh, the natural resource around which Litchfield County kind of centers itself. It's a place that has been spared the homogenization which uh, characterizes so much of our country. As a teenager, I used to regularly go down and fish in the evening in the Housatonic where I wasn't supposed to. Um, we used to cake the fish and we used to eat them. It turns out that this valued natural resource has been the subject of recent environmental controversy. This is a sign that says, warning to people who fish warning women or women who plan to become pregnant not to eat fish from the Housatonic River. For decades, General Electric had an industrial plant in the city of Pittsfield, Massachusetts, and had been dumping toxic PCB waste into the Housatonic River and parts of the surrounding town. Upon finding out the potentially fatal dangers of PCBs, concerned residents pushed for GE to clean up their mess. As with any issue, opposing interests must be represented. The controversy surrounding the Housatonic was a perfect example of this. Often, 
a local person is compelled by an issue and becomes an activist. Way back in 1976, I did uh, the first PCB sampling of the Housatonic River with three other students on a grant that we got from the University of Massachusetts. And we found PCBs all through this section of river. An activist like Tim can start the process, but we learned that the only way for the process to reach a wide enough audience is through the press. We met a writer for a local paper who had focused on this issue. Now, as a reporter, mm -hmm. um, how, how big... Different from an activist, reporters strive to accurately inform the public with the facts of an issue. I think if the Berkshire Eagle hadn't done its coverage, especially in the 90s, I think you would have... I don't think we would see anything like the cleanup that we're seeing now. And there is nobody who can take that place. There's no organization that can do it. T television is not interested in uh, these problems. In the 90s, essentially, there was increasing pressure from people and from environmental advocacy groups for GE to do something about this PCB contamination. When enough citizens demand action, state representatives and corporations like GE must start to pay attention. In this case, we discovered that the EPA acted as the mediator. My name is Jim Murphy. I work for the uh, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency out of our Boston office. The EPA negotiated a compromise between the community and GE. You know, we could come in and say, okay, thanks for showing us the problem. We'll take care of it right now. I don't think that's what anybody up here wants to say because I think, you know, what we think it may, is, a solu is, is the perfect solution may not be what people in the community think is, is a perfect solution. Dredging the riverbed of the Housatonic to separate the polluting PCBs was costly. The really hard part, though, was deciding where to put the polluted material. In this case, a lot of the material ended up on land owned by GE right next to an elementary school. We are at Allendale School in the city of Pittsfield. Um, right across and back of us is what's known as Hill 78. They put all of the PCBs that they're digging up out of the river and out of the homes and put them 50 feet across this road next to Allendale Elementary School and the dust was blowing over the kids that play on this playground here. It infuriated us to see cleanup result in complication. The dumping of PCBs next to a school not too far from our own. The story magnified that this affair is, at its heart, a battle of responsibilities in a complicated government system. In addition to the problem of storing the PCB polluted material, another problem presented itself as somewhat of a surprise. Before the river was cleaned, the pollution was invisible. After the cleaning, yes, the river was safer for residents' bodies, but unappealing to their eyes. To both locals and us, the river's beauty was marred. None of the parties involved in this democratic process ended up completely happy with the outcome. But the bottom line is, the process did work and would not have gotten so far without everyone's participation. Without the individual civilian voice, I don't think anything could be accomplished. I think that the individual voice is powerless unless it has the ability to inspire others, and unless it has the ability to produce change. Um, and yes, these are vague and abstract, huge notions, but I mean, you know, affect change as in make policy happen, or as in to pass laws. And that is impossible for one person to do. But that one person has the ability to find others who have similar inclinations and to inspire them to action. To be aware of what you are reading what you are watching, what you're listening to on the radio, you know, TV, newspapers, um, because the media does have the power to skew public opinion. Democracy is very effective in some senses because definitely, I mean, it, overall it represents what we want. Democracy in general is the civilian voice. It is the voice of the people. The people choose what happens. The people decide what they want to happen and the government does it. And so one voice makes up the voice of the people. The power of the voice lies in the ability to convince. So I think that's where, you know, when we talk about the, those heroes who are the one person or the, the everyday 
common heroes who are so convinced of their cause, it's their ability to inspire others, um, either through the means of technology or through finding other people who share that conviction. That's where their power lies. I think American democracy defines America.